Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about Webpack and whether or not there's an alternative, some other way of doing what we're doing in Webpack. Uh, this is one of those days where Webpack just sort of kicks my ass and it's happened before, it's gonna happen again. Uh, I'm pretty good with Webpack actually, or at least I used to think so. But these days, like Webpack and most large project configurations, there's so many different dependencies, loaders, uh, configuration settings, they all conflict with each other. Uh, different versions of the different projects and all that stuff can conflict with each other. The nested node modules that you might have in your, your project can conflict with each other. I've run into situations where Webpack somehow doesn't um, resolve itself and there's multiple um, Webpacks in your dependency tree. It, it, it um, The list is almost endless as far as some of the headaches and complications that you can run into when it comes to configuring a modern day humongous web-based application with Webpack. So these days, Webpack actually provides way more than what I think originally was intended to be used for, which was, which was uh, module bundling. And what does that even mean? It means that you know these days, like we want to have our projects di can, can, uh, distributed across individual little modules, and JavaScript needs some sort of way of being able to import those modules and provide something called like tree shaking, so you're not importing duplicate modules and bloating up your code. Webpack sort of like it, it handles that type of uh, of nightmare for us. And why is it even a nightmare? It's because it's JavaScript, and like there is no module loading uh, default configuration within the JavaScript community, basically. And I guess if I want to explain that more, like we have what is called like ES5 modules, or um, just simply ES modules. And then in the typical Node.js runtime, you have Common JS modules, and even the way modules are loaded in a Node.js type ecosystem, which is what most of these tools are running in, you can import modules in multiple ways, whether it's the ES6 way or the common JS way. Why? Because there is no standard in the way that modules were to be imported within these environments. If you compare that to something like Python, Python has that built in. Like you import this from that, you know, it, it resolves your dependency tree. It's built, it's like a language feature. It works out of the box. Same thing with like something like C Sharp with namespaces and uh, how we bring in modules there. So there are languages and runtimes that have that stuff already built for us, but with JavaScript and the ecosystem that also exists inside of Node, it doesn't exist and that's where Webpack comes in. So as an example of something that a Webpack configuration will allow you to do is to import modules in your JavaScript code. So like this, it's you know import default export from module name where you can have a named export uh, that you're importing from a module name. None of this stuff actually works in the browser by default. So that is a, a whole nother discussion really, but this is the way that we're writing most of the code. And in order for that to even work, you have to have Webpack or some sort of module loader. You could use Rollup and then the new kid on the block, Vite, which we'll talk about more in just a second. But uh, th this doesn't just work out of the box like it would with other languages. I think one of the biggest things that I hate about Webpack is that there is nothing that seems to just work out of the box. Like even the most basic examples, you have to install uh, a bunch of different plugins and or configure a bunch of different settings inside Webpack to do even the most basic stuff. So if you're gonna be doing TypeScript or you wanna load modules like I just showed you, there's gonna be a configuration for that. If you're gonna do it with JavaScript, there's gonna be a configuration for that. If you're gonna be writing with the latest standards of, uh, of JavaScript, then there's gonna be a configuration for that. If you wanna use the Webpack dev server, there's gonna be a configuration for that configurations, 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 no defaults. And then like when we talk about in inmates running the asylum, there is like, you want a new feature, just go ahead and build it yourself. Or like, you know, we'll just have to reinvent the wheel or do this or do that, or bring in some project uh, that's like half baked, half tested. Something like create react app is actually in existence because it is such a nightmare to actually configure a modern day web application, especially if you're doing single page apps, client side routing and things of that nature. So what Create React App does, and this is created by the Facebook people to help React be um, a little bit more adoptive, is they basically do all those configurations for you and then they hide it. And then when you wanna go to actually customize it, that's when you run into a real hell of a, of a hellscape. Um, and that's where you eject the app and then you can't go backwards on that. So once you eject a React App or Create React App, then you're, there's no going back. So. As an example of something like that, take a Create React app that's built with uh, Webpack 4 and make it you know, complicated, get your website up and running, and then go ahead and try to upgrade to Webpack 5 and, and see, see what, what you think. So to see some of the level of complexity when it comes to a basic 
webpack config. Here's a webpack config from the create react app project. And you can see this goes all the way back to 2015. I don't even, I guess that's when they started working on this uh, nightmare here. But uh, anyway, one of the things that jumps out at me is it's using this require statement, which is the common JS way of loading modules, which is the Node.js default way of doing that. Uh, but that's not the modern web way, the ES6 way. Uh, I said ES5, I think it came out in ES5, but uh, the, the ES module loading, this isn't how we do it. So this is all using common JS. So what if you have an application that you're now trying to um, use the ES module loading. Um, this is not even configured to do that. This is all just Node.js module loading. But take a look at some of the complexity here of what you're seeing. You're seeing regular expression pattern matching uh, variables here to even look at that. So it's, uh, heh. and then like it, it's, um, yeah, just let me know how pretty this is to look at or try to debug or when you have some sort of runtime uh, error or you know comp compilation error that's occurring deep within your node modules because all these different tools and such everything that they're newing up all these variables up here at the top these are all separate projects and like i said they could be half baked half tested not supported and it's just it is definitely the wild west i feel like um when it comes to webpack but this goes on and on this is just simply the create react app so once you go to eject this this is going to be all on your own and then if you want to update any one of these individual dependencies, that's where you run into some really, really major hurdles, in my opinion. Um, so create React app. How long would it take a beginner to actually figure out this entire configuration? I mean, it keeps going. We're almost at a, yeah, 800 lines of code for a configuration file for basically the ability to load modules, which is like basically the default and the standard library for many other languages out there. So the real hell really comes in when you run into a situation where you have projects, some of those different um, variables that were being declared there from projects and injected into the um, configuration. You start running into like actual true issues with uh, Webpack itself or any one of the dependencies. And sometimes it's completely unclear where the issue is. I would say most of the time it is. Um, and if we look at GitHub here, there's currently 177 open issues. But there have been, uh, just since Webpack's been around, 8,000, almost 9,000 uh, open issues here. So any one of these things, like look at even what they're describing. I mean, any one of these things, you could just read it and just know, man, each one looks like a complete hellish nightmare. Another indication that this is a complicated beast is that there are now 40,000 questions on Stack Overflow. And I would say most of the time when I run into a GitHub, uh, I'm sorry, a um, Webpack issue, I'm usually finding the answers to the problem on GitHub, not Stack Overflow. It seems like, and one of the reasons is because it is outdated almost as soon as like you give an answer. There, there is some new dependency project gets updated, you accidentally upgrade that, and all of a sudden there's one little config that you're missing or there's one that's been rewritten uh, or just you know one that's not configured properly. It's It could be anything and I feel like the documentation is almost outdated as soon as it, the answer comes out. So for those reasons, I usually find that the actual issues reported in whatever sort of dependency project is usually the best bet when it comes to finding out the answer. So all that being said, 40,000 questions on Stack Overflow for a project that's not that old for a project that doesn't have that much responsibility. And I think that's a bad sign. So for anybody that thinks that, oh, well, Webpack is easy, it only take a couple of hours to learn, like, I, I get you on that. I have a course here that's one hour long. I feel like it's actually really good when it comes to setting up a modern day Webpack uh, server, like a dev server, a production environment, your basic loaders, whether it's SAS, image loaders, TypeScript, uh, it's covered all in here and including how to debug. Um, but that all said, what I'm talking about in this video is the fact that most projects are way, way more advanced. They're, they're, they're much closer to what we just saw with Create React App and this uh, nightmare of a configuration. This is about, you know, I wouldn't say maybe the average, but this is um, not all that uncommon when you, when you think about a config in a project. For those that are saying that the documentation is getting better with Webpack, I do agree with you on that. Webpack's documentation used to be almost non-existent, and that made it even more fun to deal with. Now it's just gotten much more complicated, and there's way more going on with what Webpack is trying to do. And I feel like even with the better documentation, it's still not a better experience. 
if we're looking at something like Webpack Dev Server, I mean, this is like, you know, if you installed HTTP server, like with Node or Python's built-in web server, it's just like something to, you know, to, something to fire up a server to have a web server type experience as you're developing, but you would never go to production with that. The bottom line, you would think it's, you know, somewhat easy to get that up and running, but the, the, it really isn't in many cases. There's so many different configurations that could end up uh, messing with your dev server and you know, allowing you to have like a dev server experience that isn't really mocking or mimicking a production environment. So my point being mainly on this is like just even for the dev server, there's a lot of documentation in here for a lot of different things that this thing is trying to do. And um, this is just one small, tiny, tiny, tiny piece of what Webpack is doing here. So a lot of documentation here. The documentation is getting better, but still good luck finding what it is that's causing your problem and how to solve it. So that's it. I'm going to wrap this video up by saying, is there an alternative? Does anybody think there's an alternative out there? Do we need an alternative? My opinion is that there's too much going on with Webpack uh, without enough default settings and stuff. There should be easy, there should be probably more of a community focus on, we need to have this level of support for these level of projects and not allow like basically the, the whole entire project to be kind of de developed as we go. like day to day, you know, write fast, break stuff all the time. I feel like there should be more of a community effort of like, you know what, we're not going to add this new feature unless we have a complete dependency list of, you know, this will exactly work with this and this and this because there's just too many different variations. I don't think that hiding the um, overall config is really the answer, but I guess maybe that is like part of the answer. Something like what Create React App does. I think V, uh, this new bundling tool, is um, it seems to show a lot of promise. A lot of people are really talking about it, um, is saying that it's a lot easier to work with. And behind the scenes, though, it is using something called Rollup. So I'm not exactly sure whether or not that's like a, a, a true replacement for what we need. Rollup.js was created by a guy named Rich Harris, and uh, he's like a pretty famous developer. But this is basically Webpack. I find it to be a little bit easier. It does the same thing like tree shaking. In fact, it did tree shaking before Webpack did it. Uh, by default. So these are two conflicting projects. Behind the scenes, V is actually using Rollup. So it's not like you're doing away with all of this modern madness that we're dealing with, but it is sort of, it is sort of hiding some of those complexities. And it does seem to have better uh, support when it comes to saying, okay, you know, we're definitely going to, as a project, support these plugins and these types of projects and as long as you're within that scope that you should be pretty good to go whereas like webpack it's like you can do almost anything with it i think if i could sum up this critique it's just simply that like the the way webpack has been built from nothing and has sort of like expanded into this monster of god knows what we're doing with it um it's not the same type of thing that you would see like with something like with the apache foundation or like the linux kernel or something like that they don't just allow everybody to just throw in any sort of feature on it. Um, there is like an actual community effort to make sure that things are not being uh, deprecated prematurely, that you're not causing like an absolute hell every time you have to upgrade. That's always been a problem, and I will say that with code, it's always been an issue, like right, upgrading Python 2 to Python 3 or um, different versions of, of, of different libraries have always been a pain, like Perl 5 to Perl 6, right? It is difficult. Um, but one of the things, like, I, I guess with Perl is, like, their community was, like, all about, okay, if we're going to add a new feature, we're going to add it, but we're not going to break all your existing code. With JavaScript, with Webpack specifically, there is no, and there's no forethought into that at all. It's just simply, we don't care if it breaks all your code. Here's this new feature. Yeah, it doesn't work with half of the stuff that you have configured. You know, good luck. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. 
The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.